Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 13th of March. It's good to, good to be with you this morning. I'm recording here on Barnell Ridge Farm for our service at Trinity. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 107, and reading from verse 1 to 16. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within. When they cried to the Lord in their trouble, he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight path until they reached an inhabited town. Let them give, thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty, the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. Their hearts were bowed down with hard labor. They fell down with no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, for he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our reading, second reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, and reading from verse 15 to 22. Whereas you have forsaken and hated, with no passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of nations, you shall suck the breasts of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour and Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will appoint peace as your overseer and righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence will no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you by night. But the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, or your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your steadfast light. And your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall all be righteous, for they shall possess the land forever. They are the shoot that I planted, the work of my hands, so that I may be glorified. The least of them shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord, and in its time I will accomplish it quickly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Now, Gospel reading for this morning is taken from John chapter 8, reading from verse 12 to 20. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, again Jesus spoke with them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever, will fo whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but I will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, You're testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testified on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, because I know where I come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid, for it is not I alone who judge, but I am the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that a testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, 
You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him, because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrew and Greek, there are a broad range of words that are used to describe love, and each of its own set of connotations or qualifiers. The Hebrew word chassid emphasizes the idea of God's consistent love for us in a way that speaks of love as something redeeming or rescuing of those who are vulnerable. Within the concept of chassid is the understanding of a God as the one who delivers us from ourselves or the circumstances of life. It's often used in legal documents to describe the love expressed by one who rescues another from circumstances, whether self-inflicted or not. It is that ultimate expression of love that buys back opportunity and relationship for individuals or communities. Chassid, or the steadfast love of God, is a central theme of Psalm 107. This is a post-exilic psalm, one that followed after the people of Israel had gone into captivity and returned after their time of exile in Babylon. It picks up on the same theme of chesed. It does so retrospectively. It is a psalm of thanksgiving that reminds the readers of God's steadfast love already realized. It picks up on four central ideas of rescue. Rescue of those who thirst and hunger. Rescue of those imprisoned. Rescue of those in sickness and in death. And rescue of those who face the perils of the sea. Each of the four cases follow a set pattern, an account of the past trouble, a cry to God for help or deliverance, and the act of deliverance remembered. In a sense, these four cases are universally applicable and talk of our human need to be sustained by God, both physically and spiritually, our need to find release, our need for restoration to wholeness, and our need to be rescued from danger. They are all repeated in the ministry of Jesus, who feeds the hungry, sets free the captives, heals the sick, and calms the storms of life. All of these acts of God are indica indications of God's chassid, or steadfast love, for us, because they talk of God delivering us from the afflictions of life. Chassid, or the steadfast love of God, speaks of an unequal relationship of love. This is about a supreme being who is interested in the fine detail of our humble and pathetic lives. This is what Jesus referred to as the recognition that God has the sparrow in, in sight and the one that falls. The most apt illustration of the nature of that relationship is captured in Hosea. That between a vulnerable and helpless child and the consistent love of a parent. The real difficulty for many of us is whether we recognize God, God's work in our lives at all. As Jesus points out in the parable of the rich man who builds bigger barns to contain all the wealth he thinks he has accumulated by himself, that his wealth and his very life is really there due to the grace and steadfast love or chassid of God. We, like him, can squabble about our wealth and try to accumulate more of that form of security for ourselves. Or we can abandon ourselves in trust to the one who truly loves us with an unfailing love. Psalm 107 describes an appropriate response, that we should give thanks to God in acknowledgement that God's steadfast love or chassid never fails. God is there irrespective. That there is no shame in simply acknowledging our need for God and to call on a God who will respond to us in love. There are times in life when we find ourselves hungry for God to do something, when we feel trapped by the circumstances of life, when we face illness or death, or when we have to face danger of an unknown form. It is then that we should recognize that God is faithful in love and so willing to help. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater 
than these. I'm going to lead us through our intercessions that we've set for our season of Lent. We pray to the Lord for courage to give up other things and to give ourselves to God this Lent. God of grace, give your church the courage to give up her preoccupation with herself and to give more time to your mission in the world. We pray for our regional ministry of Trinity and St. Margaret's Barry, St. Paul's Midhurst and St. John's Craighurst, Good Shepherd Stainer and St. George's and Christ Church St. Jude's of North Assa. God of grace, may the blood and water flowing from the side of Jesus bring forgiveness to your people and help us to face the cost of proclaiming salvation. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength, and hear our prayer. Give your world the courage to give up war, bitterness, and hatred, and to seek peace. God of grace, may the shoulders of the risen Jesus, once scourged by soldiers, bear the burden of political and military conflict in our world. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength, and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up quarreling, strife, and jealousy in our families, neighborhoods, and communities. God of grace, may the presence of Jesus risen, his body once broken and now made whole, bring peace and direction as we live with one another. Lord, meet us in our silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our selfishness as we live for others and to give time, care, and comfort to those who are sick and in need. God of grace, may the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch and the light of his presence fill their rooms. Lord, meet us in our silence. Give us strength and hear our prayer. Give us the courage to give up our fear of death and to rejoice with those who have died in faith. God of grace, may the feet of the risen Jesus, once nailed to the cross, walk alongside the dying and the bereaved in their agony, and walk with us in all your church, through death to the gate of glory. Lord, meet us in the silence, give us strength and hear our prayer, here and in eternity. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread, which gives life in the world. Evermore give us this bread, that we, he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. A couple of key announcements uh, for this coming week. Just a reminder that we have our Friday Lenten Lunch and Learn um, at 12 o'clock. And our, the, the, the subject of our Lenten Learn is signs of our common faith. And this uh, coming Friday we have... Uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Michael Peterson, who's the incumbent of All Saints Collingwood, as our guest speaker. Do come and join us and then f join us for lunch afterwards. A reminder that on March the 20th, we have our regional women's breakfast um, at 8.30 at Stacked at the corner of Livingston and St. Vincent. On Palm Sunday, we have a regular service at 10 a.m. Uh, that's on March the 24th, and in the afternoon we have a confirmation service at 4 p.m. at St. Margaret's, and uh, we strongly encourage you uh, to come out and attend um, and to join with our rest of our regional parishes for that service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to invite you just to join me briefly. Um, we're in the middle of lambing season here on Bonnell Ridge Farm, and I was just going to take you out to the barn to see some of the new little lambies. Thank you for joining us today. Most of our lambs this year have been singles, except for two pairs of twins so far. 
of the 16 lambs who were born. We've still got a ways to go, um, but this is the beginning of them. And there's one very dedicated little mother with two lambs. Hey buddy. Hey. Okay.